It's funny, I, I often think about writing things down as like doing the dishes and it's never like the, the highest thing on your to-do list. Like dishes, like, you know, it, it just piles up until it's overflowing and you need that fork. Clicker. Thank you so much. What's up, Running Remote? How are you? Good. All right. We're getting towards the end of day two. How's the attention levels? Are you still with me? You hanging out? Yeah? We're good? Awesome. Uh, so yeah, I'm the CMO at Trainual. My name is Jonathan Ronzio. We're going to talk today about a journey towards remote control or exercising remote control, which when you talk about remote, control can kind of seem counterintuitive, right? It's like we're talking about freedom, freedom to work wherever you want, freedom to design the lifestyle that you want. But this is about process control, systems control. This is, you can't scale a, a remote team until you standardize how you do what you do. So we're going to talk about process documentation and how you use that to build and scale your remote teams. But first, I'm going to take you on a, uh, a personal journey of mine. Let's throw it back. Usually I'm not in tropical paradises like this. Usually this is my life. For about a decade before Trainual, I actually have been an adventure athlete, a high altitude snowboard mountaineer. I've traveled the globe, led teams on expeditions up the world's tallest mountains, snowboarded off some crazy peaks, worked with brands, launched products, uh, host a podcast in the outdoor space. But this was my life uh, and, and still a big part of my life. I do a lot of this you know, today, but uh, prior to Trainual, that was, that was everything. I mean, I was out here in, this is uh, around 21,000 feet on Mount Aconcagua. It's the tallest mountain in South America, down in Argentina. And this is up in Denali. But what I learned about the importance of you know, going out on these expeditions with these people that I was going with, with some of my best friends, my climbing mates, was communication, trust, and keeping the team aligned. And now I show this picture. We're crossing the basin of the Cahiltna Glacier towards, that's actually known as the Valley of Death, on uh, Denali. And does anybody know why we're roped up? Can you see the, uh, the actual rope there? Like, why, why do you rope up when you're out in the mountains? Yes. Casey fall down a crevasse. Yes. T-shirt cannon. <laughs> you guys are going to want to pay attention. I've got a few of those. Yes, yeah, so you rope up so that you don't fall into a crevasse, which is a gap in the ice on a glacier. As it's moving, it cracks apart. It often gets covered with snow bridges. You don't know they're there. Someone on your team might fall through, and you have to be able to rescue them. You have to, especially if you're the one that falls through, you have to trust that your team knows how to rescue you. So. I learned the importance of communication and team alignment through mountain objectives like this. And I think in business technology, especially with remote teams, your tech, your business stack that you run everything on, that's your rope. That's the rope that keeps your teams aligned. So how I was doing it during this time, like during all these years, I wasn't just doing the athlete thing, like I had started a blog and I was doing vlogs and I was doing documentary films and like I mentioned, I was doing a podcast and working with brands to do, you know, product campaigns. And so to manage all that, I was using tools like Google Drive and Dropbox and WordPress and, and Word and I got to a point where like if I was out in Denali or going and traveling and, and I'm in the mountains for weeks at a time, um, it wasn't just, you know, I, I got busy enough that it wasn't just me that was producing the content. I actually had to hire freelancers to continue to keep things moving, to run the newsletter, to push out the client deliverables when I had like absolutely no connection and no way of reaching me or even knowing if I was alive. So this is what I was doing, but it was chaotic. It was madness. Like who's stitching together a mess, a web of tools, trying to make it work for something when you're just like, why is there not a solution for this? You feeling that? This actually, I was you know, recording a uh, screencast to, to like, before I went off on some trip, I had to document the process for my co-host of my podcast, which is called The Stoke Cast, still run it, still weekly, one of the top in the outdoor space. But I had to show her how to actually post to Anchor. How would you, you know, what do you do to like grab the embed code, to put on the, the WordPress blog and syndicate everything. So I was, I was trying to do it my best to document how I did what I did so that others could do it while I was away. But it, again, it was just, you know, it was not scalable. It just wasn't. Around that same time, of course, in, in my decade of, of trying to grow my own adventure business, I was reading business books like pretty much everybody else. Like, who has read a book on this list? Anybody got a, a big major takeaway from one of these? Like, what? Sh uh, scaling up. Rock. Scaling up. 
So what, 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 do you, what did you take away from scaling up? The, the setting rocks, the whole EOS system. The EOS system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. T-shirt, can it. <laughs> cool, man. Thank you. So, yeah, of course, we're reading these books, we're learning about EOS and, sc and scaling up, we're, we're reading Traction, we're learning about in, in E-Myth, and, and like the common denominator here is they're telling you you got to work on your business, right? Not in your business. But how do you do that? You're just, you're so bugged down with the day-to-day, -day. you're in the weeds, it's cluttered, chaotic, how do you pull yourself away? You learned the principles that you can't scale without systems, but you never really had the place the tool to help. You never had, like when you closed that book, what was next? What was the thing to get it done, to actually implement what you learned? Processes, systems, SOPs, roles, responsibilities, all of that. You're, you're hearing all these buzzwords. You're aspiring to build a scalable and a sellable business. But again, nothing to bring it all together. So around this time, it's my brother Chris. He's living out in Arizona, and he's a consultant. He's helping small businesses around the country build processes, as a matter of fact. He is, uh, he's, you know, systems consultant, organizational efficiency. And so I go out to Arizona, it's the summer of 2017, and we happen to be chatting. At that time, I knew that I was leading up to a, a point in probably the, next, you know, the fall, winter, where I wouldn't be traveling as much. I didn't have any big expeditions on the horizon. I wasn't gonna be on any kind of crazy mountains. It was, it was actually refreshing for so long I wouldn't let myself return from a trip without having another trip already booked. It's kind of like my own, you know, restlessness that uh, if, if I didn't come back with another thing to look forward to, I felt stuck and I would go out of my mind. So I always booked and booked and booked and made sure I had things on the agenda, but it had piled up to an unmanageable amount that I was like starting to break down. So I actually cleared my schedule and was like, you know what, this winter I'm just hanging out. We'll see what happens. So I, I dialed back on what I was doing in the adventure space. Chris was feeling the same amount of, you know, just chaos and, and just being overwhelmed with, he was scaling this consulting business, but everybody was demanding his time. It wasn't scalable beyond himself. And he was just getting burned out. I mean, he, he had one kid already, another on the way, and, and knew he had to make a change. But back in 2014, he had actually built a, uh, you know, beta, an MVP app, something called Trainual that just existed in the background of his consulting. It was only used for his clients, and, uh, and it helped them with their onboarding and their training. It helped them systemize what they were doing. It was just this like very, very simple tool that he never really tried to do anything with. But the companies that had used it in the last three years before this, one of them 5x revenue, one of them three more locations, one of them sold, one of them three to 300 people, so there was like a, a common just success story of the people that were finding efficiency in their teams using Trainual. So he kind of, we started talking about this, this aha of like, maybe there's something here. And this is obviously, you know, something that, that I've felt the pain point for that I need as far as, you know, in, in my travels and how I'm managing my work. And it's potentially the unlock for how my brother could step away from consulting, get out of service, go into product. So I packed up my car in, uh, let's see, it was like December of 20, uh, 2017, yeah. Packed up the car and um, put my place in Boston on Airbnb and hit the road. And my wife and I and the dogs just went on a big cross country road trip and we ended up out in Arizona with my brother and spent the next few months there totally rebuilding from the ground up this app Trainual. Just basically, he was saying no to every consulting job that came his way. I was not booking any more expeditions at that point, and we were totally focused on like, let's just see what this thing can do. And I'm um, building out all the marketing and brand systems, and he's you know, redeveloping everything with his teams, and it's just the three of us at that point. My brother and I and Chelsea. Chelsea's our operations manager. From that, we launched Trainual. It was about it was January of 2018, so I say we launched it even though it had existed prior to, it was never a public thing. So we launched Trainual then with about 16 companies using the app. And the, the, you know, the app was a thing, a platform that solved for all of that. It brought all of these processes, the SOPs, the, the standardized way that you do things, like a way to turn 
best practices into standard practices to document every role and re responsibility to create that turnkey business, to automate onboarding and training, to build a, sell a scalable business that if you left tomorrow, if I went on some expedition, if my brother decided he was done, if uh, you, know, you wanted to sell, if you wanted to exit, that this could be the owner's manual. It would basically be like if you sell your car, you open the glove box, that's the manual for using the car. You know how to do everything. That's what we wanted to build for businesses, and that's what we did build with Trainual. The seriousness of this, of course, we started digging into the stats and like, why is it so important? So the Association of Talent Development, they note that they did a study, and 1,300 United States dollars is what is spent training and onboarding a new employee, typically which is around 30% of an annual salary, is just spent in time training. And that's just on, on senior leadership, basically taking the time away from what they have to do to actually train somebody. So that they're not just, you know, they're training by osmosis. There's nothing really documented. So we knew that there was a monetary side of this, and we decided, all right, we got to eat our own dog food here. It's time to not only market Trainual and put it out publicly, but it was time to actually... Um, adopt it and really use it for ourselves. So I used it for what I was doing with my adventure company. I used it for the podcast and that is still running in the background. I still do that um, and I'm, I'm, you know, in like three weeks I'm down in Mexico climbing a 19,000 foot mountain and the podcast publishes every single week and all that runs still goes and I run marketing at Trainual. But and that's the beauty of it. But for, for us, it was like, we need to be documenting everything we're doing. We need to be using this so we can be our own best case study. And uh, uh, Aidy said, said, what would you want to clone? Actually, like the first ad that, that my brother and I ran for this was the two of us just walking and talking with a phone on uh, the street in San Diego in the gas lamp quarter and saying, like, if you wanted to uh, clone yourself, like, you know, your best employees, because my brother always, when I was doing my own thing, he always asked, like, how do I clone you? Can I have you take like personality tests so I can hire people that are exactly like you because we work so well together? So that was kind of the play on like clone yourself. And that message resonated. And in a 15 second Insta story ad that we were putting like $4,000 a month behind, we started getting customers for only a couple hundred dollars, you know, on an LTV that was well beyond that. So the, the scalability was there and we just started putting gas on the fire. So 18 months later, we went from launching with 16 businesses to now over 2,000 around the country. We're in 80, or around the world, we're in 80 countries now, and our users have documented more than 60,000 processes inside Trainual. And our team, actually, our team has exploded just with that. So I showed you my brother and, Tr and Chelsea and I. In the last three months, we've doubled. Um, not from that, we've just doubled in the last three months, but now we're up to 20. So it's been a really wild ride. Uh, definitely a wave that I, I wanted to be on and was able to put the rest of things on, on the side to, to continue to catch this. So what I want to walk you through is definitely it's a, a philosophy that we take around how to actually build systems into your business. And first, you got to do it. Then you document it, then you delegate it. That's, it's that simple. It's as easy as riding a bike, and that's why we're going to talk about riding a bike. So obviously, first, when you're riding, you got to figure out how to do it. This is like, this goes back to, to Michael Gerber in the E-Myth saying, you got to work uh, on your business, not in it. Yeah, you do. That's true. That's the aspiration. But first, you have to work in it. you got to figure out what's the best way to do everything. You hear people say you got to be dangerous enough at everything in your business that you know how to do at least a little bit of it so that when you hire somebody, you know what to expect from them. You know, if they're trying to like pull the wool over your eyes or if they're not performing to the best of their ability. So you gotta figure it out. You gotta actually get on the bike and ride. After that, you document it. What's the best way to document how to bike, you, or how to ride a bike, right? You gotta say like, you gotta step over onto, you, and get on the pedals and start to ride. Like whatever that, I don't know, I don't teach how to ride a bike, but I'm just saying like, you have to figure out how to document that process that you have already done. How do you teach it? So a few really simple steps for going through how to document. Start by just asking your team what they do on a daily, a weekly, uh, monthly, annually, like, just ask what they do on any kind of time period basis, right? If you like at your next Monday stand up with your team, if you ask them to do that, to brainstorm, you know, maybe for an hour that afternoon, by the end of the day, you're gonna have a crazy long list 
of just a whole bunch of shit that everybody does. They will be able to figure, figure it out and document it. And then th those become your subjects and your topics for your playbook for your business. You can keep a stop doing or a to don't list. So this is basically like, what, what are the things that fall on your plate every day or every week that you just hate, that you just do not look forward to doing? You have, you have your list and it's the thing that you just keep putting off. It's never high on the hit list. What is that stuff? That's what you want to document because that actually becomes, you know, if you document it successfully, you can delegate that away. Somebody else on your team can do it or it becomes the outline for your next hire. It's like, all right, if I don't like doing this stuff, maybe I shouldn't do it. So, you know, make your to-don't list. After that, look to your inbox. Or actually, as this should say more your outbox, it's just look to your email. But I'm more thinking sent mail here. Because if, like, everything you do generally goes in and out of email. In some way or another, you look to sent mail and you know what things demand your attention. Because that's where you've put it, that's where you've decided to reply, that's where you needed to reply. The, the whatever company pitching you on like, do you want to buy this user list that you just keep archiving, that, it, you know, it's not something that you need to care about. But if you look in your sent mail, you're going to find exactly what are the things you did every single day. And that's where you can start to make a list of what to document. Log reality on your calendar. Every single day, look back and you probably modified things a little bit. You probably had a, uh, a meeting that got moved or you had to take a call where you didn't expect to or you just kind of dove into doing some work that you needed to get done. But take the time to actually look back and log it just the same as you would look at your P&L and update actuals, right? You're going to look at your monthly marketing spend. You want to go back and, and marry that up to the budget that you had sent so you can have an accurate statement. Same thing with your calendar. Make sure you have an accurate statement of what you're doing so that you know how to offload what you're doing. I like this one. Try the hit by a bus test. Has anybody ever like just told their team or not told their team and just not showed up, just totally been offline for a day and just kind of left them to see what would happen? Yeah, you did? How, how did it go? It was a mess. What was, what was so messy about it? Okay. Yep. So she said she didn't have the process in place, so she left without, you know, and, and then it was a mess, right? Because they didn't know what to do. So what did you do after that? Did, did that inform you what, like, you needed to figure out how to, like, put down in a process? Yes. Yeah. So is it better now? Could you, what if you just didn't respond to anything tomorrow? Um, no, I, I mean, I just started writing things down. Yeah, you started writing things down. It's funny, I, I often think about writing things down as like doing the dishes and it's never like the, the highest thing on your to-do list. You never really want to document your processes. You never really want to sit down and be like, oh, this is how I, I do X, Y, and Z. This is how to send a newsletter in HubSpot. It's boring. But like dishes, like, you know, it, it just piles up until it's overflowing and you need that fork and then you got to go back and you got to do the dishes. And, but like once you take the time, it creates a better kitchen experience or a better business experience. So the hit by a bus test is great. It's just like, you know, still monitor. Take a look at Slack. Look at whatever you, you, you know, need to look at to see what they're saying. But it's, it's an amazing way to figure out, like, how, what breaks down without you there. And that's what you need to start documenting. Crowdsource it. This is one of the easiest ways and the best ways. And this kind of goes hand in hand with that brainstorm. But that's more like an individual uh, kind of just figure out the topics and subjects. Crowdsourcing documentation is really just assigning this as a task, as ju just the same as it was if it was a client deliverable. It's like you can say, hey, this month, everybody on the team is mandated to do an hour every single week of you know, documentation. Take the time to write out all the steps and all the systems and everything about how you do what you're doing, what you're responsible for. If somebody was going to you know, be training under you tomorrow, what would you be telling them about your processes? So crowdsourcing it is, is a great activity that we do actually at Trainual um, on a, a quarterly basis. We always have operation documentation and it's a beautiful way to continue to build the, the long-term playbook for your business and it, it helps with you know, turnover. If somebody leaves, you need to backfill that position. So much of the knowledge is there, it's not lost. It's not tribal knowledge that you're relying on, it's, it's actually in a system, it's beautiful. So that brings us to delegate it. This is when you actually can teach others, have them start riding the bike, right? And that's, that's the real freedom of the business. That's why we're building businesses 
because at one point we want to be able to step back and, and watch it run, watch it scale, and work on something else because we're perpetually creative and we're chasing shiny objects. Like, we're never going to stop working, but at, you just you want to be able to keep passing off the things that you're doing. It's addicting. So I want to share you uh, some stories. Um, actually, I'll just share one result story here. And this is one of those companies that I told you about, the first companies that was like really just grabbing on to, to Trainual and trying it out. Um, this is the one that went from like three to I think 230 or something like that uh, employees. This is their story. And you'll, you'll learn it's crazy relevant to everybody in this room. Uh, Russ is a business owner that manages a fully remote team all around the world. I think they're in five countries. But, um, but yeah, he's got hundreds of employees that are just remote that he has to hire to onboard to train on the culture and uh, and he's using this tool to do that so I'm gonna, I'm gonna play this real quick my name is Russ Perry I'm the founder and CEO of Design Pickle so Design Pickle was started quite literally at a coffee shop with an idea and myself and a journal just trying to figure out what the heck we are gonna do how we could really disrupt the way people access design now, Design Pickle started to get going. We had a couple team members. We were a big team of three people, me, a project manager, and a designer. But it was that starting place that I knew I had to be documenting. I had to be creating processes. And lo and behold, that documentation, it allowed us to um, keep our head on straight when the growth started to go like crazy. But turns out when our team went from three to four, to five, to six, to 10, to 20, to 30, there was this part where, okay, maybe just random files on a cloud drive is not the best way to keep it all organized. Sitting here tell, talking about it, it seems like common sense, but I ran businesses for almost 10 years without ever doing that. And so I was like, what, what could be out there that, that is still totally flexible that we can put our own content into and, you know, is designed for this, you know, that was the other thing. And that's when I came across Trainual. It's kind of like a super wiki with like tons of power-ups and superpowers. Since we switched to Trainual, the one thing that I can honestly say is I do not touch training at all, at all. And this was from an early state. All of our hires across the globe we have team members in five different countries now use this tool. They're trained on our culture, they're trained on our system, they're trained on our tools. And it works the same for all of them. I'm not expecting someone's tribal knowledge or someone to find and assemble the right pieces to train somebody. Like the quick way to take, document, and disseminate information and then make sure people have consumed it, that is essential as a leader. I would imagine that without Trainual, I would have to be paying anywhere from sixty to seventy thousand dollars a year or more to have someone doing what Trainual is doing. Looking at where we're at today, actually, last night we had our big company global town hall, and we had over two hundred and fifty people on the webinar, which has been an insane level of growth over the last four years. That would have been impossible had we not had a system in place for our people. I can tell everyone, go make a trainual, and they know exactly what that means. The best time I would always recommend someone can start in terms of documenting your company, documenting your processes is right now. So guys, I'm, I'm blown away every day about where we're at with this, like how fast we've grown. I mean, at the, at the heart of it all is just my, my brother and I are passionate about making business easy so that we have more time to do it, whatever it is that we love to do. And that's what we want to share with, with others and make it easy for everybody else to do more of what you want to do, right? For me, it's like traveling with my wife and the dogs and climbing mountains. For my brother, it's hanging out with his kids and, and being able to travel. Like for, for you, it could be a anything. But that is the, the whole point of this is like business should not be so hard. And that's why we built Trainual. And the ride that we've been on has just been 
unbelievable. There's been hundreds, if not, you know, now at this point, thousands of stories like that. We just haven't been able to like film and talk to every single one of them. But I know that I've had conversations with tons of you over the last day and a half out there. And whether we're playing with Legos or chatting about what's going on in your company, I mean, the, the fact is process has been like the biggest buzzword at this event. Everybody is talking about how important it is to document your processes to scale your teams so that you can ensure the, the consistency of message delivery so that you know that people are doing what they're supposed to do, right? It's just, it comes down to that crux. And then back to, I think, uh, in the panel yesterday that Andrew was running, I believe it was Pomp that was talking about like when you're recognizing when you're trying to hack a tool to do something that it can't. And like, how many of you currently keep a lot of your processes and your standard ops in Google Docs, just raise your hand. Is that the best option? Like, how, how is it working out? <laughs> not? <laughs> Explain, like, why? Why is it not working? Well, there's no standard process. There's no, yeah, there's no standard process. Yeah, so there's, there's no, like, standardized way of documenting. There's no hierarchy of organizational information. Exactly. It's just everybody does it differently. We also, and you forget, it's, it's one of those classic docs that you have on the cloud. Yeah. And you want to have that as one of your priorities. Yeah, yeah. So you're saying it's just on the cloud. It's, you forget about it. Like, these are just scattered. You don't know who's seen what. There's no way to, like, really track that somebody has retained the knowledge. So that's basically, like, what this is, it's, it's a hybrid between a wiki and an LMS which is a learning management system. I don't know if everybody knows LMS. Uh, raise your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty, pretty uh, everybody knows it. So that's just what this is. I mean, we could, I could kind of riff up here. I just wanted to create more of a conversational thing and get through this so we had time for Q&A because I prefer talking than presenting. Uh, talking with you, obviously, I'm trying to make this very two-way. So, uh, so, but to make it even simpler, just write this down or open it up on your phone right now, just trainio.com slash free checklist. You don't have to enter an email, you don't have to do whatever, it's just gonna be a, a, a document for you which has 150 or more topics and subjects that you can start to go through as a checklist to say like, yep, I have this, I have this, I have this, I need this, just as a thought starter for what you might need to start documenting in your company. So check that out. And then I know we are doing a, uh, a code for, for all the running remote attendees, which is just uh, remote, so you get a free month on Trainual. Anybody that wants to try it out, try implementing that for your system, try moving everything from Google Docs into a more scalable, trackable, easy to update system. Um, yeah, you get a free month. And I know a lot of you shot me some messages too that uh, you wanted to meet up, so I'm gonna be hanging out over at, at our booth, so be sure to stop by if you haven't yet, and, and let's chat. I wanna meet you and, and hear what's going on in your business. And, uh, and thank you. So be sure to follow Trainual, follow me, and uh, let me know.